I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. Let's be honest, if you took Pixar out of the equation, Disney would still be putting out some damn good CGI films. From Tangled to Wreck-It Ralph to Frozen to Moana, Disney has been making smash after smash winning over both audiences and critics. Some of them are even among the highest grossing movies of all time. It's amazing the quality of films they're pushing out. God, did it not start that way? <laughs> Being Disney's second computer animated film without Pixar, Chicken Little is among one of the most awkward, uncomfortable, mean-spirited movies they've ever made. And don't get me wrong, I love mean-spirited Disney! <laughs> Whether it be their villains, creepy imagery, or whatever the Christ this is. But that's not what Chicken Little is. It's supposed to be bright, colorful, and upbeat, but instead it's ewy, disturbing, and as upbeat as an animated series on The Good Son. How did such a thriving CG empire hatch from such an ugly, rotten egg? Well, we're here to take an unfortunate look. Let's see why our IQs are falling with Chicken Little. So the movie is so unclear with its tone that it actually has three false starts. Once upon a time. How many times have you heard that to begin a story? Ah! No, I don't think so. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? Oh, no, no, not the book. How many have seen opening the book before? You know naming cliches surprisingly doesn't make you above them? You have to actually do something with them. It's like if I start off a movie with, This movie starts in a store. No a house. No a bar. Sorry, sometimes I type my post-it notes into the script. So they decide to go with, I guess, no intro. As we just cut to Chicken Little telling everybody to run for cover, leading to some already confusing jokes. <laughs> I guess what's supposed to be funny is rabbits have a lot of kids. How they all fit into one stroller is at least an abstractly forced joke. How's this for world building? A universe comprised entirely of animals is watching Indiana Jones. This universe is as coherent as a VR chat room. Nothing is established. But hey, a giant water tower knocks out cars honking old McDonald. Get it? I don't. As if all of this wasn't aggressively nonsensical enough, keep in mind, we're not even two minutes in. Nothing is properly established except Zootopia's direct-to-DVD sequel clearly needed 10 more rewrites. <laughs> Chicken Little! Nah, don't tell me the main character's name! I was happy in this anarchy of confusion! This is 12-year-old Chicken Little, voiced by 30-year-old Zach Braff. I, I know it's here! There's a piece of the sky somewhere! That matches as well as Dr. Claw voicing Ariel. I'm ready to know what the people know. Says the sky is falling, but everyone thinks he confused it for an acorn. It doesn't help either that he starts saying gibberish. For never any established reason. Big acorn level fla. What did he say? Big, big, big acorn level fla. Hmm, I wonder what that is backwards. I still stand by Garden State. Oh! So the town makes a movie about him. As towns do. As it's one year later, and Little's father, voiced by Gary Marshall, constantly reminds him of his failure. It would be better for you just to lay low, don't call attention to yourself, right? Yes, but See, it's, a... it's like a game. I, I, yeah, a game know. of hide and seek, except the goal is never to be found, ever. The important thing is you feel no love from me, like my audience's reaction to the other sister. There's the crazy chicken! Yes, it is crazy, little chicken. You're so smart. We don't make eye contact. Bye-bye! Okay, he rung a bell, not decapitate a student. Book burnings have more tolerance than this! After discovering even traffic won't stop for him, he makes it to class where Patrick Stewart plays his greatest role since a pile of shit as the teacher who reads off the students' names who just happen to be descriptive phrases. Foxy Loxy. Present pretty and punctual. Runt of the litter. <laughs> Fish out of water. Happy Mallard. <laughs> Ugly duckling. <laughs> Hello? Hello? This is the 1950s. We'd like our cartoon sound effect at something ugly back. Well, I'm sorry, I have no control over that. Oh. Well, who does? I suppose the people who made this movie. But they made it in 2005, right? Yeah. When they have moved on to newer material by then? Well, one would think for Disney. Oh, God. Disney used that joke? They must be in a rut. Well, they will be for a while, but believe it or not, they do pull out- Why am I still going with this joke? Has anyone noticed, by the way, the animation moves like a choppy cutscene from a PlayStation 2 game? Everyone is either spastic or has more molly in them than the movie Ghost. Dodgeball. Pump it, pump it, pump it! Split into two teams. Popular versus unpopular. <sighs> Move over, George Orwell. Someone else has beaten you for best commentary. Coach! Yeah, unpopular. Shouldn't we review safety guidelines? Sure! Hit the pig, kids! <laughs> Why do I feel like this world is one step away from Man in the High Castle? Ah! 
Waste copyright money on a song for a joke that blows? Chicken Little tells Ugly Duckling, played by Joe Cusack, that he wants to do something great to get everyone's mind off the goof up they made a year ago and make his dad proud again. But she doesn't think it's a good idea. The nut needs to be cracked open. Bam! Smash! Bits of emotion flying everywhere. Anger, frustration, denial, fear. You see what I'm saying? Character over explains something that nobody understands. Classic outdated comedy. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! Ha! No. There's a whole section about it in this month's Modern Mallards. She says he needs closure with his father, but Fish Out of Water uses the cars that fall out of her magazine to build a skyscraper. <laughs> I thank this movie for allowing me to reference Loaded Weapon 1 by asking the question, you stole from Loaded Weapon 1? Little tells the bullies to stop picking on them, but he's flung against the window. Adding to the good cheer this film has to offer. I guess this is done while the teacher is gone, but really, wouldn't it be encouraged while the teacher was there? This world is pretty sick. He sets off the fire alarm though, of course getting blamed, leading to his father called to the principal's office. Now look, Buck. You were Buck Ace, Cluck. Our school baseball star. Your kid, he's nothing like you at all. That in no way connects to anything, but it's good to know the principal's as big a dick in this world as anyone else. Little decides to sign up for the baseball team to try and make his dad proud, but he's constantly benched until his big break. Up next, <laughs> Chicken Little. <laughs> he's gonna lose the game for us. Disney, you're gonna fail and we don't love you. Surprisingly, though, he makes a hit, immediately winning over the town's bottomless pit of shallow attention. Even his asshole dad congratulates his athletic achievement with passive-aggressive praise. I guess that puts the whole sky is falling incident behind us once and for all. My love for you is like a grocery store staff, constantly shifting depending on convenience. But things change when apparently a piece of the sky falls, but he keeps it a secret so people don't mock him again. So he calls Ugly Duckling and Run of the Litter, who are singing beautifully dated karaoke. If you wanna be my lover, you gotta get with my gotta get with my Yeah, a foot-sized joke in Frozen gets a PG, but singing about the qualifications of being someone's lover? Every toddler should see that! Or how about this nugget of family okayness? Remember when that icy blue stuff fell from the sky and it just turned out to be frozen pee from a jet airplane? It's frozen pee! I love my kids' films to have towns getting pissed on. It really made more of that in Winnie the Pooh. He shows them the device, but it accidentally sucks up fish out of water and they go to save him. Abby! Abby, wake up! Come on, let's get out of here! What was that about? Ooh, it's amazing how none of this is like the original source material at all. I hope this doesn't become a thing. Let's go into the alien ship where they find fish out of water, as well as apparently an evil plan to destroy the Earth. <laughs> Either that or they're just marking off places they've already been. If I cross off a day on my calendar, I didn't destroy the day! The aliens find the kids though and try to attack. Gee, I wonder if a crop circle joke is coming up. Great! Just throw a door at them and a glass of water and they'll be beef for life! Chicken Little rings the bell alerting the town, but of course, the aliens go away and no one believes them again. It's the acorn thing all over again! Hey, there's no story here. Well, at least we can sell the video to Chicken's Gone Wild. I don't know what's more disturbing, the fact that there's a show called Chicken's Gone Wild or the fact that a little boy qualifies to be in it. The, the well, eyes are glowing in the uh, tentacles. Well, that's enough. <laughs> Don't make mommy take away your Streisand collection. Okay. Can the remainder of this review just be me speculating what kind of animal Streisand is in this world? I'm gonna say anteater. Of course, he looks to his dad for support, who completely turns his back on him yet again. I, I'm really sorry about this, everyone. Looks like this is just a big, crazy misunderstanding. They designed him with two apple seeds for eyes. It's amazing he sees anything at all. 
One of the aliens is left behind though, and I do have to give credit that they could have gone with just a generic alien design, but they do get creative by putting rainbow bright shoes on troll hair. Let's be honest, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull would have been a little better if this was the alien. Thus, he ends up befriending Little. His name is Kirby? They left him behind? Darth Vader's Luke's father? Oh, come on, Lucas films are the only human movies we get out here. How aren't we talking about them more? But the sky breaks apart for all the town to see, and the aliens start invading, looking for their kid. We gotta go! No, wait, Dad, I gotta tell you something! What, what? I know, I know, you were right! Alien invasion, I see that now, look up! Okay, for the amount of assholiness we've been putting up with, that's not enough. We need, like, the entire town to bow down to him like Return of the King. You keep getting copyrights for other songs, how about Howard Shore score from that moment? Forget it. You know, you wouldn't believe me anyway. Son! Son, come back! Son! Forget it, Buck. It's Chicken Town. Where they play Chickens Gone Wild. Seriously, what was that? While obviously ripping off Spielberg's War of the Worlds, though apparently not obvious enough, as they literally have to tell you. It's like War of the Worlds out there! <laughs> and this isn't a parody of The Matrix. Buck catches up to Chicken Little and they try to work things out. You're never there for me. I mean, you were, you were there when I won the big game, but not when I thought the sky fell. Your mom, she, she was... You know, she was always good with stuff like this. I'll never forget the day she never came back from Panda Express. But you need to know that I love you. And I'm sorry if I ever made you feel like that was something you had to earn. I mean, granted, any love I've shown for you has clearly been done through earning it, but that's not what I... No, that's what I intended. Oh, and he kisses Ugly Duckling because their relationship was so special they decided to spring it on you at this very moment. Now that's closure. Now if only you showed how it started. By the way, for the amount of aliens looking for this kid, how can they not spot Conan O'Brien's pubic hair running through this gray colorless city? Even when they do find him, they don't turn him over. I think it's a safe bet any of these ships will get him to his parents. But they're anything like Chicken Little's dad, I'm just assuming they disowned him already. They make it to the roof and try to get the alien to the literal mothership, but they get beamed up and talk to the alien's dad. Release the child! Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. You have violated intergalactic law 90210! I recognize that number! That means it's funny! It'd be nice if there was some connection to that zip code that gave it some relevance, but just me recognizing it is enough. Writing. Words are hard. But the sun comes in to save them and returns the town to... How did Willy Wonka put it? Their normal, terrible old selves. That is, except for Foxy Loxy, who seems to have lost her bully tomboy ways. She's way to put her back the way she was. No! She's perfect. Lollipop! Lollipop! Ha! The little girl her parents raised is dead! But show tunes! Lollipop! Lollipop! Darling, look at the time. We better get a move on. I guess I shouldn't be shocked that Disney merchandising has made it to planets off the map, but having Mickey with a third eye, isn't that kind of like alien blackface? I like to see the movie they make about you now. I just hope they stay true to what really happened. Oh, son, these people are from Hollywood. <laughs> this irony's so thick, Tony Stark is making a suit out of it. The movie is, of course, overblown, ridiculous, and has no connection to the original tale, and the film version they watch isn't that good either. Now you can throw your head back and laugh! Ha! <laughs> I gotta give credit to casting Adam West as Macho Chicken Little, though. It may be the only funny scene in the movie. The sky is falling. <gasps> Commander Little, no! Please, call me Ace. And yet it's still more accurate than The Blind Side. Chicken Little, the dad, and the audience are happy with the movie, though, proving this film's moral that facts and deeper meaning don't mean shit as long as you're satisfied for the moment. Don't go breaking my heart. Credits roll with Runt and Foxy singing a duet. Because that's really funny. You know, because of all their interactions that they had with each other and now they're complete opposites. Oh, you know the interactions like this couple seconds and nowhere goddamn else. Chicken Little, it's about relationships. Question mark five explanation points? Yeesh, this is not only an unfunny film, it's just kind of a rotten film. Everyone is so needlessly cruel, and not in a fun way. Had the world characters or environments been better realized or defined, maybe the meaner jokes could have worked. But it just tosses you in awkward cruelty after awkward cruelty. 
I guess there's a good lesson about parents and kids listening to each other, but it's done with such bland and or unlikable characters that it's hard to take reasonably. And on top of that, it's just not the story. It's like if the tortoise and the hare had aliens and the moral is never trust a wolf in sheep's clothing. It just doesn't add up. I hear a lot of people grew up liking this, and if that's the case, I can't fault the message it's trying to get across. But as Disney films go, this is a spoiled egg worth passing. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and next week, I better get a better bird movie. That's not based on a phone app game! Hey, I'm Doug Walker doing the charity shout out, and if you see this, you probably know what charity I'm doing today. It's the Children's Health Fund. Yeah, I know you've seen that red nose campaign here and there, and it's for a good reason. The Children's Health Fund is committed to ensuring high quality health care to America's most disadvantaged children. They achieved this through expanding access to comprehensive primary care, reducing health barriers to learning, responding to the needs of children impacted by major public health crisis, and improving the health and well-being of children through advocacy and public education efforts. Over the years, they've replicated this approach across the country. Today, the National Network provides care through 24 innovative pediatric care programs and affiliates that serve children in poor rural and urban communities across the country. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see just how hard they work to make sure as many children as possible get the care they need. Get your red nose on and donate to an organization working hard to help so many.